are starting our extensive talk. Uh, today we're going to talk about spirituality because it's the theme of the month. Uh, eu tô falando em inglês porque o nosso convidado é, vem direto de Londres aí. And the live will be in English. Uh, the other lives of the month will be uh, in Portuguese again. Uh, if you have any questions about the topic, we are going to talk about spirituality, about awakening symptoms, and uh, yeah. Uh, let's test the sound. Hello. Um, yeah, now, <laughs> now it's all right. Okay, yeah. very good. Very good. Uh, well, I, I think you, you should start presenting yourself. Mm -hmm. And then we, we just start as people arrive. Uh, the live will be okay. on my IGTV. So uh, because it's 1, uh, 1 p.m. here, uh, mm. so there, there are not so much people online. So, but they will see well, it later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's always good. It's good the, uh, the extra piece of that. So yeah, how I would present myself is just by saying I'm a normal person, basically. There's nothing special <laughs> about me. I know a lot of people that maybe getting spirituality claim to be some kind of supernatural or anything. But what I believe spirituality is, and the true definition of supernatural, is that it's more natural than anything else. It's, it's second nature to us, it's who we are. I think we're all spiritual beings, and this is something I learned while sort of discovering more of myself and waking up. And what waking up initially took the form of was a very difficult experience for me, something which rocked me to the core, I lost touch with who I saw I was, my whole perception of reality changed, and this changing perception is an essential nature and the essential aspect of which we call awakening. It is complete change and not only our most sensory awareness and things like that and who we see ourselves as, but it's also a complete change in our overall positioning of how we perceive things. If we're seeing from the perspective, not as a person, someone with a body and mind, but someone with a, someone, you're coming from a deeper essence within yourself. And uh, seeing this, this is going to completely, like, going through this experience is something that was very, very difficult for me to start with. But then later I grew so, so grateful for having the experience because it changed me so much in many, very good ways. And it's still sort of changing me. And I do think it's something that never ends. It's something we, you grow to live with and it becomes, our life essentially so uh, I really wanted to start putting myself out there on the internet and doing it through a number of ways different platforms mainly YouTube and just to sort of help people go through the transition because I think you know what I went through is something that's becoming more and more popular and the more people I meet more people that have talked to me um, are going through something very difficult and not everyone knows what it is at first and like I was for over a year I had no idea what was going on with me so I sort of looked deeper into it and realized the only way which could describe this whole array of crazy stuff was that I was waking up. So, so I started putting my message online during lockdown, which I felt like was a really good time for me because it was, you know, the whole world stood still. I think the whole world went in as well and became more aware of everyone. All individuals became more aware of themselves and also looked differently at the, their placement on Earth. And just it was a the whole big deal of the, I think um, inner work which I'm sure we'll discuss further in a bit. Um, and yeah, I feel like sharing the message so far, <laughs> you know, it's been very rewarding. I've slowed down recently due to the business in life and, you know, that's the nature of the process. Sometimes we go, go, go. Other times we need time to reflect. We need time to slow down and, you know, remind ourselves of our priorities. But yeah, uh, and here I am talking to you, Mariana. You kindly reached out <laughs> quite a while ago, but uh, here I am eventually. And uh, good to be here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's hard to, to uh, present ourselves in this context, uh, mm. but uh, uh, everything that you said uh, fits well because uh, we are a spiritual being having this life experience, so <laughs> it's, it's difficult to, to put a label on it. And, uh, and about, uh, you said about uh, uh, it remember me that I feel like we are going to a moment uh, where we, uh, it's kind of the image of a guru or something, it's kind of different. It's more like a mirror 
than like oh you do what i say or, or something or more like a friend too uh because i feel like in the past decades or uh, i don't know even more uh the guru was more like the untouchable person and uh, people just could, couldn't resonate much and and thought like enlightening was more like uh, something uh that is very uh, a, a shift that we have in a perception uh really yeah. but uh it's an ongoing yeah. process <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah people can get trapped in the idea of the great the teacher the student at the end of the day we're all students we're, we're just all going for our own unique experiences and you know all i'm but the thing i'm trying to the perspective i'm trying to go for is i went through this maybe it can help you but you know i'm just as much wanting to learn from other people i just as much want to reach out to people that follow my content and learn from them and also relearn that just because you're doing a spiritual awakening doesn't mean you have to devote your life to a spiritual cause or spiritual purpose by nature by essence we are spiritual innately um, yeah. so whatever you do however you do it it all links back to these sort of overrunning ideas of why we do things, why we give, why we share. It's at the end of the day, I mean, whoever, your, people that probably watch your content, watch my content, subscribe to the idea of frequency vibration. And, you know, these are all things that are experienced through the most simplest of things, like such as uh, in the book um, Levels of Energy by Frederick Dobson, he would say the highest point in the frequency vibration people experience during their life was such as mothers when they first give birth to their children. I think there's this idea of frequency vibration can be a great way of helping people move up. And uh, that's essentially what awakening does. It shifts your frequency, raises your frequency, so you can live a life more of peace, of bliss, of joy. So there's something on the other side of things which people can really look forward to, people that are struggling, because you naturally will go down in vibration initially while you're dealing with, say, your dark night of the soul or you know, go through what I experienced, which is mental health difficulties along the way. Um, but it's all, you know, very important for becoming, raising yourself to a higher set point overall and living a more fulfilled life. But it doesn't have to do with spirituality and you don't need to claim to be a teacher, although all of us want to help and I think your purpose is to help. That's the best mission you can have, really. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, uh, well, I think we can start uh, by the spiritual awakening by itself okay. because yeah. uh yeah the theme is spirituality is a very broad theme so <laughs> uh you, you, you said about uh, other frequencies because uh one of the symptoms is like we we are more in the higher realms and then we realize that we have to ground ourselves mm -hmm. there's another process and you have videos on it too but uh well tell me about your experience first and maybe i can tell a, yeah. bit, a bit about my my experience yeah. too well I, I, th I think you know I could, I could there's different time frames in terms of my experience so i could talk about the literal awakening when i just was having crazy uh for example almost like hallucinations during the day i would see auras i would see my vision yeah. was blurred i felt so intense these intense Sort of like energy, physical, very physical symptoms in my body, which were very seem, seem to be very hard to define. And what to match? Uh, yeah. uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, yeah. uh, did you had uh, some type of um, religion, or uh, did you have uh, some kind of belief system before? Mm. I'm asking because before of my awakening, I was an atheist, uh, but. Yeah. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, I will too. I will too. Just curious. <laughs> I, I, I would say I would, I would too, generally. So, like, what I was getting was I had that literal experience of my awakening, but then that made me think back of when did I start to sort of get involved in any sort of spiritual thing, and that was long before because I, uh, I thought, when I was younger, I was just, I just loved exploring and like finding new things and not really wanting to define myself in a certain way. And yeah, I, uh, I would have, I, I guess I was brought up to be a Christian of early years of my life then I sort of I guess just sort of looked was thinking more went towards a more rational mindset of okay this is potentially you know not maybe like a materialist approach but I don't think there is a yeah 
uh, I Here's think there is a problem of the connect with the connection. Yeah, yeah now you're back. Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, just a moment. Now. Um, so yeah, I did, and then I took the, the approach that you know it, it can't or there can't be a god. It doesn't make any sense. And then so later on, I guess in my sort of pubescent years, I one of the a very intense experience for me was visiting back to Vedanta Manor. It's a Hindu temple in the UK. Was, I think it was actually opened by. Paul McCartney, because the Beatles during the 70s and 80s, you know, began, you know, believing in Hinduism, or sort of Eastern spirituality. Yeah. I think he actually helped fund open the place. So there's all these uh, Hindus, these people that feel from all over the world, different ethnicities, that have all decided to commit their life to serving in this manner. And uh, I remember it was just before we went to eat. It was just a school trip. We were just walking, like looking around. It was like 13, 14 at the time, and everyone <laughs> was saying Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, and everyone was praying. And I remember watching it and feeling this intense feeling of like, wow, this is something special here. Something beyond just the approach, which was my view before. It's like, if, it, if I can't see it, if I can't hear it, then it doesn't exist. But there was a deeper feeling, something that really resonated in me with that. And then right at the shop at the end, I decided to buy some Hindu prayer beads. And every night I would do 100 prayers. It was just completely out of nowhere. I was just a normal 14-year-old boy. But I started to do this. And then, and then I took I really listened up to the religious education class in school and I got interested in Buddhism. So I, I would sort of jokingly say to my friends, I was a Hindu and a Buddhist at the same time. Um, and I, I, so, so I guess that's where sort of fascination with spirituality sort of began. And then when I got into self-improvement when I was 16, I realized that oh, I could think differently. There are certain ways I could change you know, myself. I didn't really think I could change, but there were certain things I can do, habits I can take up, things like that. And meditation is one of them. So I also began meditating before bed every night. And that really changed. I, I could feel myself having more intense dreams, things like that. So I also did psychedelics, you know, so I was always sort of exploring that region. But I was never, I was sort of like a hobby. What so kind of interested. psychedelics? <laughs> I, I did um, LSD at quite a young age, actually. And, uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I think I talked about in a video once and it was really amazing and uh, I had a very positive experience the first time and that sort of accelerated that interest in the, our potential really if we can experience this and I think I don't know if it's the same for you I'd like to ask these questions I felt like if I can experience this sort of bliss on a drug surely there's a way where I wouldn't have to take a drug where I can sort of tap into that you know part of myself yeah. which I felt like it, it, it's almost felt Natural, it's just felt like our natural state, and if there's something I can do, some way I can peel off these layers that were blocking me from experiencing that joy, that feeling of abundance and complete bliss, um, then I'll, there's something to be said for that. And do, did you feel the same after your first few experiences? Uh, sorry, uh, are you? Questioning how was my experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in terms of uh, do you feel like? Uh, yeah, I was going to to ask yeah. and tell more after that, but mm. as you ask it, uh, uh, yeah, I was uh, kind of using that approach of being more rationalizing those things. I, I always mm. question. I, I also question uh, about how it would be to feel like that without using any substances. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, and the, the 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 way I used it, LSD was in uh, some more, uh, how can I say, with some directions, mm. uh, because I, I used it, uh, I had an experience in early age, but then I experienced more after the awakening uh, to integrate some parts too, uh, also mm. plant medicine too. Uh, and I, I have a theory about uh, that uh, some people just can't handle when they use this LSD. Uh, maybe because they are afraid of looking at, at things. So uh, I, I didn't use uh, LSD, uh, I don't know, uh, going to a club, for example. I think it would be too overwhelming for me. Yeah. Uh, because sure. we we kind of feel everything. So... Um, can be a lot and some people when they do that they can have a, a bad experience mm. on that too even if you are with someone that's not balanced you can kind of if you don't have boundaries 
I feel like uh, it would be kind of a little bit messed up. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about psychedelics because at each time it's so different and most of of the uh, situations where I uh, use it, I was alone. It was more like integration. But plant medicine is different. I took ayahuasca, for example, wow. yeah. in, in some moments. <laughs> I'd find that. That's what I'm um, well, I waited a lot to to do ayahuasca, uh, so uh, I kind of waited the the calling to to do it. So I guess uh, it wasn't so much traumatic. I I didn't have the uh, um, nauseous nor anything. Uh, it was wow. more like uh, uh, showing. It showed me more like. Uh, uh, where should I go? What my talents was because I did so much shadow work before that uh, I guess it was more like and it's funny because I was like prepared to do the shadow work and then it wasn't. It was more like just to say like yeah, stop shadow work and just enjoy life. It was yeah, literally that, that message that to me. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think there is certainly something to be said for getting caught up in it because you get some momentum going, but they also need to know sort of when to like, yeah, there's a, there's a certain amount of introspection that's necessary, but I think we're all intuitively guided towards sort of knowing when that step is to take. And it sounds, it sounds like it's, it's a problem, it's really something that instead of I think psychedelics can be more fun and give you an explore, it seems like promise is something, something where it just tells you, right. You need to do this. You, it's very clear the message has become. Yeah, example. yeah, and the and the intention uh, for using that, I feel like people have more shocking and awakening experience through psychedelics or through plant medicine. I think the people that have that type of experience are more people that are are not so familiar to look into themselves. But if mm. you if we grow up kind of obsessive about looking in ourselves, I feel like it's a different experience. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's my perception. I, no, I, I, know I agree. I, I think everything is, <laughs> is, is useful for everyone. I think in terms of bad trips, the, you know, I've had good and bad ones. Um, I think when you take, at the time, you know, the bad ones seem very bad, but when you look back at it, there's two sides of the same coin. At the end of the day, whether or not you're being shown good things about yourself, bad things, you're yeah, still even so the much. bad trip very, is necessary. Yeah, if, if, I would say you probably learn more in a bad trip about, you know, where there's, you know, areas that, where you come up against your biggest fears, the fear of survival, particularly, you know, when your ego flares up and it's very much resistant, you're worried about death, you're almost confronting death. So, yeah, I yeah. think both, there are both, some people. There's value in both. There's value in both, I'd say. Yeah, there are some people that uh, during those experiences, they experience like death of mm. past lives or whatever, and they have a lot of that feeling. And that's funny because it, it reminds me of your video on sleep paralysis. Uh, and I remember that, uh, that video right now because uh, when I was a kid, I had a lot of sleep paralysis. Uh, we don't have internet to, sh to search about that. So it was something that uh, for years uh, I had to deal alone. I mm. felt that I was going to die. I even created a system to get out of sleep paralysis. And it was, well, that was a very dark moment. Uh, <laughs> So uh, when I saw your video about people having that after the awakening, mm. uh, I feel like it's more like a cleansing, a spiritual cleansing too, and facing the fear. Because yeah, yeah, I, I as a as a child we have a lot of fears too. Uh, so I and 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 all those things led to my my awakening. So <laughs> mm. yeah, I think uh, it's, I think you know. Just understandably, due to the way, you know, our culture, things like that, the religious depiction of what scary things are, demons, things like that, you know, I think 
Yeah. People are rightly scared, but and it's very hard to say, you know, do the good thing when it's very fine. It's a very fine experience. So it's, you know, I have them very intensely. Mainly when I've been through, like when I initially started waking up, I was around like 18, 19 years old at the university, and it's very like intense. But what I've noticed over the years is that how slowly I begin to be, begin to be more accepting of when it happens. Whereas at first I would have like massively, I'd be massively agitated, very tense you know, very, very scared and very resistant, like wanting to leave, wanting to sing, wanting to go, you know, for, for example, see like, very common one is seeing like a black yeah. figure appear in your room, I don't know whether that was what you saw in the chat. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's all the black figure and mm. the voice. The, mm. It's a terrifying voice. voice. It's a cliche, yeah. it's, a, it's a cliche of that terrifying demon voice. It's, yeah. it's very <laughs> <Well>. weird. <laughs> Yeah. Um, one thing that's very hard to do, I think, because I think what we do, we disassociate ourselves with things that are bad or fearful, things like that. Um, so partly the, the way I started managing to just be more comfortable, when I would feel it appear, I would feel that my body would just relax as opposed to being, you know, shuddering or very scared of it. I think what a thing you can do is, like, just see it as an extension of yourself, like see it as the bad things in yourself. Would you want to be scared and run away from the bad thing of yourself, or like you say, you do how you use psychedelics? It's almost like a psychedelic experience when you do get sleep paralysis. You wanted to, um, yeah, because you want uh, to be more accepting, you want to be less resistant to it. Otherwise, you're gonna the more you resist, the stronger it becomes, and you know the yeah, more you, I agree. you shield your truth up away, and the more you know that fearful nature sort of takes over and begins to run your life. And the same with trauma. Anyone with pent up trauma, the more you get scared of that trauma being repeating, it will repeat. Um, yeah. I think one yeah. massive thing during awakening, and maybe why it happened early for me, is that when you awaken, if you believe in Kundalini, your it's your root chakra that opens up first. That is the base of your fears. And yeah. when these when these fears arise, obviously you don't want to associate with it, you don't want to think, I am less fearful. And as a result, you may, for example, if you're scared of social situations, constantly be scared of that repeating and that will just start to take over. Whereas if you become more accepting of it, be accepting of the fears, they will slowly disperse. And I think that goes for anything to do with sleep paralysis, to do with trauma, to do with um, issues, just small issues you're facing in your life, the more accepting you can become of yourself and that you're not imperfect, but you're going through this process and if you have that trust that these things are being healed, you'll ultimately be a lot better on the other side. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And we kind of transmute that and and do it for the collective because fear is, is still a lot uh, <laughs> around here and people are controlled by fear. I feel like we we still have a lot of things to transmute on that. Um, especially... Uh, because it's funny, uh, just to finish the topic of sleep paralysis, but uh, there, there is that uh, some people just can't breathe uh, during the process. And I think it's, it's, it's very connected to, to fear. And I, I also was thinking that uh, sleep paralysis could be kind of a lucid dream that become a, a nightmare. Because in a lucid mm. dream, we have all the power we create, yeah. we have everything. And uh, in the sleep paralysis, we are lucid, uh, but we don't control anything. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting thing. Yeah, I think I've, I've often gone from being in a lucid dream to having sleep paralysis, yeah. And uh, it's, it's an interesting one, yeah. I mean, there's, the <laughs> it's still like the other so side. Much, there's so much science, science still has no way of working out why dreams happen. There's still so little known on what dreams are. And it's still such an unknown field of science, which I think is really interesting. I think there's, we get to find out more studies on that, if that's even possible. Because I get, when you're going into, you're going so deep into the subconscious mind, which is, you know, while you sleep, which is so much more powerful than our conscious mind, and which, and that's all we know about. But the subconscious is, yeah. has so much power. And I think what happens during awakening, you, you bring forward what's in your subconscious. Your subconscious begins to sort of open up and emerge and reveal itself to you, which is very scary. It's like an unraveling. How I see awakening is like an unraveling. And 
Yeah, there are going to be very strange things that happen. I, anyone that can relate to things that we've said so far is going to face very strange experiences and experiences that I'll be able to give the large, you know, broad, you know, relate, be able to relate uh, lots of things that have happened to me, but you're going to have your own individual things, uh, certain yeah. physical symptoms that just relate to you and relate to your, your life story or the lives you perhaps had beyond this one. So just say, keep an open mind. That's, you know, that's the advice I'd give. Keep an open mind. Even if you haven't heard me mention a certain thing that you're going through, that's perhaps only for you to figure out. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And uh, I feel like uh, spirituality and with psychology, it could uh, work together because it's important to sometimes we we have some spiritual uh, healing and if the person just not um, work with a psychology too, it might be more confusing. It might um, happen things like spiritual ego or mm. something. What, I don't know, what, what do you think about it? Um, do you repeat that again, please? Just, uh, uh, yeah, about... Uh, Connecting the, the spirituality, the spiritual right. practice, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. more like a guidance in a more psychological way. Uh, but also with less mental to mm -hmm. uh, in a logical okay. way, because mm -hmm. it, it can be on the way too if we are too logical. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. One of the most significant things that maybe what, one of the definitely the most significant things that happened to me during my waiting was that I began, the, the monologue, the inner talk in my head began to, began to just stop. And from there, I, it's sort of like the blinkers were off for a moment. I was seeing reality for a very small picture. And one of the biggest perception changes people may have is that they broaden their awareness. And part of this is all becoming more closely aligned with the present moment. This is you being far more perceptive of what's going on in the present. And that psychological aspect is that you're now less dependent on your mind in, which, in order to guide your life, and you're more perceptive of things in reality sort of guiding you naturally. You're more perceptive of how you feel in your body. So I, I got far more grounded in my body during all this. Um, but I was, I was sort of lost the first time. Like, why can't I think anymore? It's like my mind can't even think. I was <laughs> usually like a very like, mind you know, based person. And that's why I had such a difficult time initially because I was trying to bring force my mind back into my body and like think more. But you start to be guided by, you know, your connection to the present moment, which is much more greater. So for example, you know, your perception will open up, you become more aligned with your emotions, your feelings. They will start to emerge, almost like elevate up for you to work through. So your overall your dense sort of contracted worldview starts to expand. Um, and this is what expansion is, in my opinion, is just becoming more aware of the present moment. And as you wake up, you become more and more aware. That's why you say you're waking up, because you're no longer going through life in a sleepy, in a daze, stuck in your head, unable to perhaps empathize with people like you would be able to normally, unable to have perhaps say things that you want to say. Like, for example, if I was to give a talk years ago, I'd have to prepare everything I was going to say, whereas now I'm here with you. It's very spontaneous. It's just coming to me. I didn't prepare any notes before we did this talk because that was that would put me off track if I was there something yeah. I'd be trying to use my mind in order to recall what I put down so it was like it, controlling the, exactly, the how it would yeah, be yeah. <laughs> yes because now you know you're becoming more in tune with the present moment because we are naturally in tune with the present moment who we are naturally um, and you're becoming less resistant to the present as whereas before we would resist the present moment we would perhaps resist the life we're living the reality we're with, the people around us. Now you begin to be less in resistance to it, but that also reveals to you what you're not in alignment with. I think that's like a big psychological change. So now it's not how you wake up, you look around and you're like, whereas before I was managing, I was bearing to be around these people. Now I'm like, you know, they just don't align with me. And you, you realize you have that power back, the control in your life. So it's, it's strange, right that you get the control back in your life. Um, you, you're less controlling your reality, but you, it's now your life for this. Yeah, I agree. Sort of stand 
Whereas now I think the main thing is it's all your choice. And the more empowered you become, you realize it's all your choice. It's quite a long one. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I was going to say that about, about the choice. Because, yeah, you have to be present and, and observe everything to make mm -hmm. better choices and understand. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not better choices, because I, I don't know if there is a better good choice, because everything mm -hmm. leads to something. Even not choosing at all, it's, yeah. it's indeed a choice. <laughs> um, yeah. I have some questions, too. Um, uh, that, um, I think I already asked it, some of them. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to ask about uh, more about your channel, uh, your content, what do you think about the future? Uh, yeah, a, bit, a little bit about uh, shadow work too. I think we already talked more about it. Yeah, uh, you, you said you are in college. Uh, it's no, a... longer. no longer. No, no, I graduated in 2019. Uh, yeah. What was your the, the degree? What were you studying? Funny enough, I was studying uh, politics and sociology. Funny enough, so uh, I did go to the university, being very like you know politically minded, and thought that that was perhaps something I wanted to do. I've always had the intention to help people, whether you know I was thinking about doing working with NGOs in other countries, something like that. But uh, you know. Everything that we've been describing sort of just hit me about six months into starting university. Um, my grandfather passed away, which was the first sort of sense of grief I ever got. It was a really rocky wow. time. I was, you know, my health was, uh, came under quite a lot of strain and my parents' marriage broke up. I, I think these were sort of factors that led me into this uh, sort of like, this mental challenge, all these challenges came at once. And I think the overwhelm of that while I was continuing doing meditation and things like that, and had this interest in spirituality, I think that led to the awakening. I think when people's mind are put under such strain, all the brain can do is sort of rise above, rise above it, and you suddenly become present, you suddenly become aware. And I think what makes people want to become a healer, what makes people get escape from their own difficulties is the healing they do themselves. Well, how do they find it? Maybe it's perhaps through art, through... Um, a discipline through a certain job that they heal themselves and once you've healed yourself you become far more conscious because you're, you're aware that in a way stepping away from everything pain is almost like a choice and, and now I look back I realize you know all of those things on the surface were of course difficult but I still felt challenges a year into that a year later after all these events I look back at it now I realize when I was feeling really down, it was in a way a choice because I didn't yet have the space, the clarity of mind to realize to become, you won't, you won't be able to change until you become aware of it. And first awareness is very difficult, but then you can get past it. But anyway, yeah. I still, lost, I still have an interest in politics, though. I still have an interest in politics. But uh, I, at, the, at the moment, career-wise, I'm still looking to build a business and sort of help people through things like this. But uh I've been put on hold recently. I've been very busy. And I sort of want to take my content in new directions in terms of, instead of just filming me, I want to film other people. I want to sort of put in shots of things going on in the world and yeah, do something with that. I, want to, I do want to upgrade the quality of the content. That's why I haven't posted in a while, but uh, I'll know that I'll be back soon. Good. <laughs> and to, sub to anyone that is watching, subscribe to his channel. There's a great content. <laughs> and uh, uh, the, the politics theme, uh, yeah. I feel like it's, it's important to, to know and learn about it. Um, I, before the awakening, I was more into politics. Uh, and I'm yeah. glad that I learned a lot about it because right now I can see things with uh, this uh, knowledge because I feel like people, especially in spirituality, they want to talk about politics, but they don't want to do the work about studying what politics is. And uh, yeah, there, there is the manipulation, there is the illusions and everything, but we have to know about it. 
uh, about everything that is happening. Uh, yeah, and uh, I am in Brazil, so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I am very, I'm very glad that uh, I can deal with that without uh, getting into all that energy. And I will yeah, I ask you... Yeah, very, like, a lot of yeah. political tension, I mean, both sides of things. Yeah, because uh, what's happening here in Brazil, it's a tr transition. Uh, and I feel like America in general, as a continent and other countries, uh, they are having that shift that is about... Uh, I feel like it's consequences of the colonization and ex explorations that have happened centuries ago. And now people are realizing that they are free. So it will be some transitions. I feel like the presidents are, are like the mirror of the shadow of the people. Mm. So yeah. because they are, they were elected by, in a democracy. So people voted on them. <laughs> yeah, so if they, think... they don't like what they are seeing, they could look in, inside of them. To, to see why why that bothers so much and uh, yeah I won't start talking about the story of Brazil because it's very complex there is a lot of things that happen here <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. but I would like to uh, ask you a question because that question was asked for me uh, because if to a fr uh, for a friend that lives here uh, too and uh, she asked me, uh, how can we deal with the Brazil situation, the death, the, all the death that's happening, uh, and deal in a spiritual way uh, about it? Because, yeah, people are uh, dying and there is that energy. Uh, yeah. In every pandemic will be that grief that needs to be transmuted to. And uh, how spiritually uh, yeah. do you think about it? Uh, I did a live about it, but I did in Portuguese about grief and oh, everything. Right. But <laughs> yeah, yeah so, so are you talking me about the topic of grief, or yeah. how we can sort of find solutions to these issues, the very yeah. hot issues? Um, it would be yeah. more like a, a guidance. What what do you feel like people that are living in countries where uh, the situation is is not so? Um, it's more like dense. How can mm. not? Uh, yeah, not get into that or use that situation to kind of work on themselves on something or integrate. There are a lot of approaches. Yeah, that's very hard. I, th I think one thing is that people set their sights too high in terms of you see someone in bliss or something like that or living an extremely amazing life somewhere else. I think well, you've just got to focus on your struggles day to day and how can you, you know, on a rational level, be a better person. But by doing that, how can you, uh, for example, if, how can you be a, a slightly higher on the vibration scale? How can you, if you're being attacked, be, look for the peaceful approach. How can you, Frederick Dodson levels of energy. I, I keep quoting this book. It's, it's an amazing book. Uh, everyone should buy it. He always talks about how the violent protest, if no matter what cause the cause is, even if the cause is a great one, if it's met with, you know, violence, then if you still remain at the energy, you're almost lowering yourself to the energy of which it came from originally. And it's quite yeah. a far approach, but even if it's, a thing for peace and for climate change, yet people are being violent. You're still lowering the cause, the energy, the vibration of the cause is maybe quite high, but by, by the action you put in, it's lowering it. So then you've got to look for the approach in which brings people together with the collective approach and uh, the approach which keeps people in peace. And uh, I think ultimately that will be done by uh, collective, you know, things like strikes, and collective action, see and a peaceful action, I think is one way of achieving stuff. Um, because not only will it stop, you keep the vibration high, it also attracts, you know, now things are online, the attention of other countries and things like that. It's 
the one side is clear, clearly the oppressor. Whereas if both sides going about with extreme violence, I don't think that's been historically successful, I'd say. But uh, in every country, he would, this Frederick Dawson will also say there's a certain there's a set vibrational point as well. And um, it's, yeah, it's cultivating the space within, it's trusting that if you're waking up, things are getting better. But geopolitically, yeah. spiritual wise, it's not my, uh, not my like, topic of uh, expertise to say. Yeah. I, I feel like, uh, thank you for your answer. And I, I feel like awareness is, is the key for that because you kind of feel like uh, you don't need to engage on that. And um, mm. yeah, mm. because yeah, people, like, back, people, yeah. people like uh, put the government like a father figure uh like they they should provide or something and uh if the government is good they are feeling good if the government sucks they are f going to feel terrible and uh there are a lot of people doing a lot of beautiful work here in brazil spiritually community um and we should also focus on on that too and in each country too yeah uh, i think i think news is, is but it's not a not in an alienated not in an alienated way you know mm. <laughs> i don't know if i express it no, myself I, but... I, th i think removing yourself from things that which program fear into you uh, news media i prefer to consume my, like the news just for fire print just the newspaper because i feel like it's less intrusive into into my space into my like sensory awareness um yeah Channel in if, if you're feeling not good. Look where you're getting information. Look where, look look at what you're viewing, what you are receiving, and consuming is and everything. Is it is it is it frustrating you? How do you feel after using it? This is all like when you when you wake up because you're more sensitive. You've got to be aware of what you're putting, like what on your palate. You've got to be aware of how you feel after. I think that's that's. I think it's a natural phase for a lot of people to be alone afterwards because they sort of want to you know, they're uncomfortable with how they're feeling and people want to distance themselves. So that's a great opportunity to yeah. look around, to gauge, oh, I don't like this. I'm, you learn so much about yourself in that time. I love that time I spent feeling like I'm um, quite alone here, I'm feeling strange. But now I'm so grateful for that, you know, little period that I had because, you know, now I know what I like more. I know why I'm not, where I naturally feel good. Saying everything is... Certain things are high vibration, certain things are low vibration. I don't think, I think it's, it's too, you're putting, you're, you're again putting rules and programs on to yourself, you know, which you've tried so hard to remove. I think people again, spirituality felt like they're free, but then they're judging everything as low or high vibration. Just listen to yourself. Yourself is, you don't need to place a mental judgment on it. You have to feel your way to, you know, what aligns with you. You've got to, feel does that make you feel good perhaps doing mma fighting and having the occasional beer for a lot of spiritual people would say it's low vibration for you that could be your passion that could be how you lift you know the other your yeah. friends and family around you up that could be a way in which you have time to socialize i, I wouldn't say put a label on things you know use your increased sensitivity to find your purpose find you know what it is you want to be doing and yeah your joy ultimately yeah i i agree it's 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 very it's very personal uh, the mm. the the journey but i i feel like the hermit phase is very important yeah, that's, that's yeah. because because we have so much information all the time and uh if we don't be in silence we don't get to access the the intuition the voice within so I feel like people are very stressed because we we have a lot of information. It's it's overwhelming. Uh, I, I feel like uh, we are moving to a moment where uh, it will be more minimalistic way of living and everything. But I feel like it's it will be a process too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I lost for a second. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, I, I, it's definitely a little process like this. Uh, it's very exciting. Like for me, for example, I, I think this is something I'm very passionate about doing content, but I'm always open to exploring new ventures, new avenues, whatever. And yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, I think I ask it a lot. Uh, I have more and more things to talk about, but uh, I guess so. I'll let it end here. <laughs> sure. If you right. have something, something no, more no. to to talk about, if you feel like. Um. Well. Yeah. Like. I mean, it's been very nice talking to you, Mariana. Like, I'm sure we can do this again if you'd be interested. Um, I just want to say, anyone that's, you know, obviously having a hard time or anything out there, it's anyone that is going through some mental difficulties right now, just know that this this is all a process for you. This is all your chance. What you're dealing with now, your weaknesses, what you feel are your biggest failures. If you're interested, if you feel like you're waking up, you feel like you've resonated with what you've said today, these weaknesses, these the things that I thought were my, I was worst at, you know, gave me the the deep experiences that I needed to make it my the thing that I'm now best at, you know, the thing that I'm now most proud of. So all this is like it's it will be flipped on its side. Anything you're going through, the darkness uh, gets transformed into light. Just be patient yeah. and uh, and trust. Truly have trust. And uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting. There's so much more to explore. You'll never, I think, be bored. Um, if you're going into yourself, there's always more to discover. And it is just a journey. It's just a journey. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And uh, the outside world may sometimes seem limited. You're yourself and what you can conjure up in your mind and discover about yourself will always be infinite. Because mind is infinite. Yeah. So, yeah. And there's a and, uh, and there's a lot of there's a lot of people awakening right now so mm. it's really important uh to have this safe places and guidance and videos about it because yeah uh it, it, how can I say that um uh, we kind of feel like we are going crazy because we we have a different perception of the universe and people are not having that. And there's a lot of information on the internet. So we kind of search about everything and, mm. and, and be like lost. Mm. <laughs> so it's, it's important to, to mm. talk about it, to, yeah. honor, to understand more. People, people need to honor where they are. They will understand that you are on the spinning rock. You're flying through the universe to yourself. As someone like, like almost like an astronaut on another planet, you've your perception is changing. You're perhaps merging into a higher state of reality. So, see yourself as an explorer. See yourself as an explorer, and learn lessons from yourself. There's, I, you know, obviously if you need it, you know, if you want guidance, you search for it. But ultimately, like always, ask yourself first. Always ask yourself the question, and you will soon, you know, you'll find an answer. Whether it's do you hear, you know, a thought comes to you or a manifestation happens in the external reality. Like, don't just view yourself through the lens of an orthodox life on this planet as a person. You are an explorer coming through this Yeah, uh, I think there so, was a problem. Oh, no, it's okay. Uh, there, there is a comment here, uh, Charlotte. Uh, the the live will be posted, so just uh, go on my IGTV, on my profile, it will be posted. Uh, if someone has some questions, um, let on the video, we can answer later uh, and follow him, follow me too, because I have more uh, live talks about this topic. Sorry about like, that. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, 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 I thought it, just, it went weird for a second. The phone didn't I die. thought your phone died. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I don't have much more to add. I just want to say thank you for everyone watching. And uh, yeah, you know, you can follow me. I also have a Facebook group, Awakening Aid Community, where I try and post blogs fairly recently. Have been a bit, a little bit unactive recently, but uh, actually, this is the start of uh, getting going again. So thank you, everyone, for taking, taking the time to tune in. Thank you, Mariana, as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it was very 
insightful <laughs> and funny. <laughs> totally, been everywhere. Yeah, it's been so late. Yeah. Concrete yeah. <laughs> so have a nice weekend. Um, yeah. uh, uh, by the way, uh, you asked about uh, talking on Clubhouse. Uh, maybe we can have a talk some. Yeah, into, um, I mean, uh, the next to one to be yeah. on Clubhouse. I need to use more the app. Uh, I created a club okay. there, so. <laughs> okay. Good. Let's yeah, do it. No, I'm also very much an experience on there, but why not? Yeah. It's, it's great for interacting with other people, with other people in the talk. So good app for that. So. Cool. Yeah. yeah, we can we can do that. Uh, if you are watching here, fo follow us on Clubhouse. We are going to do more talks. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.